Well, it is 7.34 p.m. on Tuesday, December 20th, 2022. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein, and I am the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals, and I am calling this meeting of the board to order. I'd like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Let's see, Roger is here. Patrick Hanlon? Here. Uh, Venkat Holly. Venkat, you're on here. mute. Thank here. you. Uh, Daniel Riccadelli? Here. And our associate member, Elaine Hoffman, will not be with us tonight. Um, on behalf of the town, Rick Valorelli, our board's administrator. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Rick. And assisting us is Vincent Lee from ISD. Here. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Um, appearing. Uh, so there's no one here appearing on behalf of 39 Woodside Lane. Um, we will be voting. They have requested that the they um, be allowed to withdraw their application because it's taking more effort to redesign around the um, the easement that was found on the property. So we'll be only holding a vote to accept that uh, request to withdraw. But appearing on behalf of 201 Old Spring Street, um, uh, Stian Linz. Yes, hello. Sorry, I did. Hello, I'm sure I did not pronounce that correctly. Apologize for that. That's okay. Uh, okay. No one in the waiting room? This open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations Signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2023 of the remote meeting provision of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location, so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything that you broadcast may, may be captured by the recording. We ask that you please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the town of Arlington, Massachusetts, discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotony, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and uh, pass on the administrative items for now. We'll come back to those so we can go straight to the uh, public hearings. Um, after So turning to public hearings, here are some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicants to introduce themselves or themselves and make their presentation to the board. I will then request that the members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. And after the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. At the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. So the, that, the first item then would be docket number 371539. Um, I will go ahead and share the letter um, from the from, uh, Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor as the uh, applicant's lawyer. 
Um, and on behalf of the petitioner and the above reference matter, uh, she requests an application for a special permit will be withdrawn without prejudice. So as I, I briefly stated before, this was an application that was filed with the board several months ago. Uh, the board held uh, one or two hearings on it and then um, continued. And then it was discovered that there was an undisclosed easement on the property. And we continued again. And then um, the applicant had come to me last week saying that they, they were still working on the revisions and asked about a further continuance. And I had recommended to them that they instead uh, ask to withdraw and then um, without prejudice and then reapply. Uh, and what that will do is it will give them as much time as they need to get their uh, drawings prepared relative to uh, working around the easement, but it also makes sure that the application gets re-advertised so that the, the public will be up to speed with when this comes back before the board. Um, and the, the, the neighbors will be better informed when this comes forth. So with that, are there any questions from the board? Uh, Pat, you are, yes, Pat. Um, the uh, record in this case includes a fair amount of commentary from uh, uh, from neighbors and others, uh, mm -hmm. and some of that will maybe moot given whatever the new proposal is from the applicant, uh, but other parts won't. And rather than inconveniencing the applicant, I wonder if it's possible for us to uh, deem that the filings that they've already made would continue to be part of the record in the event that there is a uh, new application that file that is filed dealing dealing with this because otherwise I'm afraid that everybody is going to have to go through the trouble of resubmitting all the stuff that they've already submitted. I guess when I think about it, it, it may be that we could handle this when the case is filed again, assuming that it is, but um, in either way, I, I'd like to find a way of avoiding putting the neighbors to the additional trouble of refiling what they've already filed. Okay. Anything else from the board? Seeing none. Um, then I would move to approve the request to withdraw from 30 side uh, 39 Woodside Lane without prejudice and note that the record to date will be re-entered into the record should the applicant reapply. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Any questions from the board? We will take it to roll call vote. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So uh, the motion to approve the withdrawal of 39 Woodside Lane is approved. Um, so that brings us to item six on our agenda, docket number 3727201, Old Spring Road or Old Spring Street. Um, but our applicants are here. So I asked them to introduce themselves and tell us what they would like to do. Okay. Sounds good. Nice to meet all of you. Uh, we are the uh, listener family. My name is Stian and next to me is my wife, Natalie. Uh, we have been in Arlington for 10 years and we've been at 201 Spring Street for almost seven years now. I really enjoy living here. This is a great house and a great neighborhood. Uh, we have two children, five years and nine years old. So the close proximity to Bracket uh, School is a big bonus for us. Uh, now, the thing that's been a little bit uh, painful is the kitchen. So we have been wanting to remodel our kitchen for pretty much the entire time that we've lived in the house. But there's no optimal way to really improve anything with existing floor plan. So that's when we engaged uh, Pegasus, uh, designed to build, to help us. And the solution turns out it is to extend the, extend backwards and sacrifice some of the area that's currently occupied by a deck for the extension. Uh, the project also includes rebuilding this deck because it is very old and falling apart. So it needs to be repaired and rebuilt. So unfortunately the house 
sits at an angle relative to the left property line with the Emersons, which then naturally limits what we are able to, to do, what we can build. And that brings us to this point uh, to see what is possible. And uh, uh, I guess, uh, did I cover everything, Natalie? Yeah, I say? think so. Yeah. Okay. Is there someone here from Pegasus tonight or no? Yes, I'm here, Jenna. Jenna, do you want me to bring up the plans? Um, if you oh, wanted to just walk us through them. Sure, no problem. Um, yep, so um, we're proposing a six foot addition off the back of the left side of the house there. Um, so it expands basically in line with the, the current corner there, um, which brings us um, more non-conforming. So um, right now they're non-conforming at the 7.5 feet um, and at that angle then brings us closer at 6.5 feet. Um, so that's the drawing you see there. And then um, the only modifications that we've done to the footprint of the deck are moving the location of the stairs. Um, and we've discussed that we are flexible with, you know, um, how that corner is um, utilized. So right now, if you can see um, closest to the property line there, the stairs are basically like inset within the deck. Mm. Um, and they're a little awkward for them to get in and out of their yard there. So um, essentially making that usable deck now and moving the stairs um, toward the middle of the deck and sticking out a little bit. Um, so that footprint basically expands their kitchen there. Um, and within their kitchen right now, there's a powder room um, and they have very limited storage. So this is sort of the solution that we came up with. Okay. Yep, so that's um, the footprint. Um, you can see there the stairs um, at that left corner there of the deck that I mentioned. Um, and then their current kitchen, which is um, sort of tucked by the chimney there and the basement stairs. So it makes it, uh, pretty tight um, for, you know, two people to be working. Um, and then there's a powder room also there. So, um, yep, you can keep going if you want. Yep, so those are the existing elevations there. So the deck footprint doesn't change except for where the stair locations are. Um, and the grade is a little bit um, tricky, I guess I'd say. So um, the grade is, um, they have a, a garage under their front of their house. And then the grade comes up um, towards the back of the house there. Okay. And then, so this is our proposed footprint. So um, we've expanded the powder room to incorporate their laundry um, and then given a little mudroom space for coats and book bags and all that um, necessary items. Um, and then made a, a more comfortable kitchen layout for them. Um, so that's the six foot addition at the rear and a little under 21 feet um, of the width. And those are just a few pictures of the inside there of the, and the kitchen. Yeah. Which one we have that? Nope, we have that twice. We don't have that. Yeah, of course. Oh, you don't have the. Huh, I definitely have the exterior elevation. Uh, I have, let me try a different file here. Um, let me try. I'm missing a page um, number. Oh, wait a second. I think I have to open a new one. That's the existing. That is the proposed. Yep, there we go. So, <laughs> um, a little crooked there. <laughs> there we go. All right. Perfect. Yep. So it's a single story addition. Um, so the siding on the house is a little unique. Um, most of the house is brick from you know when the house was originally built, um, and then the previous owner um, built a dormer on the back of the house, as you can see there, which is siding. Um, 
I believe, is it wood um, clapboards? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and it's painted. And so that's what we're proposing to do as the finish of our addition um, on the first floor there. So basically those two um, portions will match. And then um, just sort of a low pitch shed roof there. Um, and then again, you can see the deck, um, which is in the same footprint as it is now. Great. Back to that file here. Okay. Well, thank you very much for, for walking us through the project. Um, so this, pro so this is an interesting part of um, of the the zoning bylaw and the zone the state zoning law. So, um, as the applicant had mentioned, this is the current setback on the side yard here is seven point five feet, where in Arlington the required minimum is ten feet. So, this property is an existing non-conforming house with regards to the side yard setback. And what the applicant is requesting by extending the rear wall of the house out six feet, they are decreasing that amount. Um, so instead of being 7.5 feet off the property line, it's 6.5 feet off the property line. Um, this, If the house was conforming on this side and they had requested to, to extend into the setback, then that would be a variance because they are creating a new non-conforming condition. Um, however, in this case, they do have an existing non-conformity that they are um, intensifying. So they are making it more non-conforming, but it is already non-conforming. And this is, um, in state law, this is taken up in chapter 40A, section six. Um, and the state law and the town's bylaw allow you to increase the intensification of an existing nonconformity, but the board has to find that um, that intensification is not detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, and then and the board typically does that by applying the standards for a special permit um, to evaluate whether whether that condition is met. So um, <clears throat> At the time that this was filed, it was filed as a variance, um, but a request for a special permit is less stringent than an application for a variance. And the board in the past has allowed um, a special permit to be approved under a variance application um, because the, the standard is lower. Um, so that just a, that's just a sort of bring everyone sort of up to speed on, on what this is. So essentially what this now, because it's an existing nonconformity, this becomes a section six determination of, non, of whether or not the requested intensification of the nonconformity is more detrimental than the existing condition. Um, so are there questions for the applicant from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, it may be that that this is more appropriately directed to Mr. Valerelli, um, but I'm wondering whether the inspectional services has made a determination whether this is an extensive an intensification of an existing nonconformity or whether it's a new nonconformity or potentially whether it's de minimis and so not really an extension of the existing nonconformity. Or generally, we followed the lead of ISD on this, and uh, the record does not indicate what ISD's views are. That's a good question, Mr. Hanlon. So ISD saw it as a variance because the deck uh, being open is a, has a whole different uh, set of rules. But uh, Chairman Klein did a great job of um, uh, turning that into uh, an extension of a nonconformity. So unfortunately, it's a little ambiguous, and um, therefore we leave it to the board to make a determination. Uh, can I have a word here? Because uh, um, I live, I'm Dave Emerson. I live on the house on the left. Yeah, we will. We will absolutely get to you, sir. Okay. Uh, I need to do questions from the board first. All uh, right. 
At th this point, I was just trying to get clear as to what the procedural basis of all of this is. We're not we, we're not really dealing with the merits of what what is or, or or isn't there. I guess the other question I have, Mr. Chairman, is whether there is any information, and this may be something that when we get to public housing, Mr. Emerson would like to comment on, whether there's any information that if we treated this as a special permit application, whether there's any information that is missing from the document that we have before us that we would need to know in order to decide whether or not um, the, whether or not to be that we we can make a section six finding and issue a special permit here. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Are there any further questions from the board at this time? Hearing none, seeing none. Um, I will go ahead um, and open the meeting for public comment. So public questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Members of the public are granted time to ask questions and make comments. The chair asks those wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing to please be patient and allow those wishing to speak for a first time to go ahead of them. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the meeting host and asked to give your name and address and to be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. Once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed. The board and staff will do our best to show documents as requested. Um, so with that, I will call on uh, Dave Emerson. And if you could just give your name and address for the record, sir. Uh, David Emerson, 205 Spring Street. Thank you. Uh, if, if you could put the, um, the survey picture back up, that has probably the... Okay. So, I, I mean, I have no problem with the kitchen part. The problem that rises is the deck, as you can see, it goes out. It's not six and a half feet at the end of the deck. It's more like three and a half feet. So I'd either like a bump out of, a bump in of 18 inches or something to maybe make it, or maybe it's six and a half feet for the, the last 10 feet of the deck. Because it is very close at that at the mm -hmm. tip of the uh, of the new deck to the property line because of the way that the lot is configured. Mr. Hallorelli, how how close is the deck supposed to come to a property line? Well, in this case, Mr. Chairman, it's a pre-existing condition, so mm -hmm. as it was built, it could be rebuilt on the same footprint. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. If, if it were not a pre-existing condition, what would the rule be? I recall it's half the, is it half the distance to the property line? It would be 10 feet from the side yard setback, Mr. Chairman. So it could theoretically go to the property line? No, no, it would be uh, 10 feet side yard setback to the deck. Oh, 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 to the deck, okay. Yeah, exactly. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'm being a little dense and can't follow this. The, the uh, I know that the deck is supposed to not be more than ten feet from the from the face of the building, which it wouldn't be here, um, and it sort of is obliquely impinging on that side yard. The protected property line is ten feet. Period. Mm -hmm. uh, and the question I have is that we, the deck normally can, uh, decks frequently can and do project into protected side yards. And my, my question is if you could explain a little more about what the, what limitation there is on that, if there is any limitation. So, Mr. Hanlon, 
Uh, I was going to go ahead and bring up the code on that. Looking for five three nine five three seven. <coughs> no, stop. So unenclosed steps, decks, and the like, which do not project more than ten feet in the front yard or more than five feet in the side yard beyond the line of the foundation wall may extend beyond the minimum yard regulations other provided for the district. And enclosed decks, which do not project more than 10 feet into the rear yard. So <clears throat> in this, if it was to be, if there was no deck now and they were constructing the deck, it could extend, or actually, no, it's entirely within the rear yard. It's not in the side yard, it's in the rear yard. So therefore, not protect more than 10 feet into the required rear yard, not closer to the lot line than half the size of the required yard. Okay. So Mr. Chairman, that would be five feet, correct? Uh, not closer to the lot line than half the size half of the, the size yes, of Yes, I believe that required. is correct. So if this were just ab initio, it would be a little bit too close. Yes. back to the plan. But as Mr. Valarelli notes, this deck is this deck is a pre-existing it is an existing condition. Mr. Chairman, just to, to I, I don't want to conceal where I'm coming from here. I I this is one of those things where obviously everybody has got legitimate interests at, at play. Um, and I'm trying to think about the way in which these things could be reconciled. You know, if we just left it as things are, uh, we have to make a finding that the extension of the kitchen mm -hmm. would not be more nonconforming, would not be more intrusive to the neighborhood than the existing condition. Ms. Remison's argument is it would be more uh intrusive not because the kitchen particularly but because he has a concern about the continuation of the existing of the existing situation with the deck we're not obligated it's a discretionary thing for us as mm -hmm. to what to deal with as far as the kitchen is concerned it's not impossible that reasonable people could get together and say you know as a way of dealing with this, we might want to make some flex. We might, may, might want to make some adjustments on the deck in order to make clear the way for what's done with the condition. It's it's all a thing that reasonable people could discuss and could think about. And ultimately, the discussion, the the, the issue for us is a question of discretion. So, presumably, I would be very interested in what the uh, what the applicant and Mr. Emerson and, and potentially others might might come up with but it it's it's a it's a situation where there's not a huge amount I mean we're talking about feet here mm -hmm. and it's not like there's a huge amount that's at stake in in any direction uh, but it would be nice to be able to have this done in a way that uh that nobody has to walk away from the loser and that's just yeah. as a loser and i'm just kind of looking at it from that point of view and trying to explore the possibilities of coming to a win-win situation for everyone oh, thank you mr hanlon mr emerson did you have any further comments no i, I just uh, that that point there at the end of that deck is probably three and a half feet something like that because there's flowers on both sides Mm -hmm. And what my what I was hoping is that maybe we could get it to like what it is from where the addition 
the six foot addition is at six and a half feet and either take it out at an angle or bump it in a foot or two. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's, there, there's nothing at that end. There's no stairs. The stairs are in the middle of the, of the deck. Yeah. Okay. It's just a little, it's a little close there. That's all. All right. Well, thank, thank you very much. Are there other members of the public who wish to address this hearing? Do not see any going once, going twice. Mr. Moore. Yes, Mr. Chairman, sorry for the delay. Um, uh, just building on what Mr. Handler had to say, um, I think- uh, Mr. Moore, I, I have to ask- Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, Steve Moore, uh, Piedmont Street. I apologize. Thank you. Um, uh, based on uh, what Mr. Hanlon had to say, uh, as a disinterested party, a suggested compromise might be to just make sure the corner of that deck does not exceed the current nonconformity uh, of the house, which is it's seven and a half feet. I'm not sure what it says there. Um, and 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 like uh, Mr. Emerson was suggesting, you know, bump the deck back. That would be a compromise here because this is going to extend the nonconformity of the uh, the house. Um, and yes, it's grandfathered in, but I think a compromise with the neighbor would be just to take that corner back to uh, the original nonconformity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Are there other members of the public who wish to address? Once, going twice. With that, then I'll go ahead and close the public comment period for this hearing. So the, I'll go back and uh, share the site plan again. <coughs> so again, the, <clears throat> the question before the board, so we, it's a house with an existing seven and a half foot side yard setback, um, which is non-conforming. And the request is to decrease that from seven and a half feet to six and a half feet by way of creating a uh, essentially six by 21 foot addition on the rear of the house. Um, that takes up an area of the deck, which the, the applicant has uh, stated is a deck that's in a state of disrepair and in need of um, some, ser some serious work as a part of this process. And they are also intending to relocate the stairs um, from the corner to being more central on, this, on the backside of the deck. Um, and then in addition, we do have um, testimony from the abutting neighbor who has concerns about the existing uh, location corner of the deck, whereas now um, that corner drops down to grade. Um, I believe the intent would have, would be to uh, build it up at the height of the regular deck. So it would, um, this area here would stop being steps and would be a part of the deck and very close to the property line. Um, so I would like to give the, the applicant an opportunity to um, address that concern for the neighbor. Um, and as Mr. Hanlon, suggested if there might be a way that we could um, pull this corner back from the property line um, as a part of the reconstruction of the deck. Okay, is it okay if we jump in? Absolutely, please. Go on. <laughs> so yeah, I, I completely hear what uh, what Mr. Emerson is saying and we, we have discussed it. And it's uh, for us, the important part here is to get you know, a, a mm -hmm. better kitchen. The deck is what it is and what it was when we moved in. Uh, we we wanted to to try to preserve the area of the deck because it's, it's nice to have the deck there. But that corner there at the moment is just stairs, as you can see, and it's just kind of a uh, difficult to walk around there. And uh, uh, the, the the idea to move the stairs to the middle of the deck seemed like a, a good idea from the the way Pegasus had designed this. Now, what happens to that corner, whether it goes in at an angle or some other creative solution, you know, we're, we're, we're totally for that flexible. We, we don't want this to be any, any inconvenience for anyone, you know, even for ourselves to walk around the house. It, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good to have some space there. So 
I don't know if, if Jenna, if you have any uh, good comments, you know, that are typical in the situation, yeah, we'd like to hear from you as well, but, you know, we, we, we are flexible. We don't want to uh, make any problems for anybody. So um, I think that's all we, we have to say at this point. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Before, just to give Jenna something to work with, one of the ways that we could address this is by uh, including a condition saying that the reconstructed deck would be no closer to the property line than five feet. Mm -hmm. And that gives flexibility to do that in whatever way that makes the most sense. And I wonder if, if we did that, whether that would be, uh, whether the applicant would be, would find that acceptable. So the, I think that's a, that's a good suggestion. Um, I did want to just bring this, uh, slide up again, um, because it shows the location of the entrance into the mudroom. And I just wanted to make sure that we were, um, you know, that whatever we did, we were make, you know, maintaining um, access to the mudroom. Yeah, I think that, um, if I can, sorry, jump in. No, please. <laughs> yes, Jenna from Pegasus. Um, yeah, so I think it might feel a little bit better, like, you know, we're discussing is maybe step it in and and I think that's a um approximately two feet there um between the the corner and the door so if you know there was a compromise in the middle where you know we put the deck edge in that two feet to to give a little bit more space um I, I'm thinking just looking out your back door and and as the neighbor that sort of a straight line would probably look a little bit better than a funky angle and potentially more usable as the deck, um, and I think, yeah, maybe it's a, uh, gives us a little bit of creativity, you know, a little flexibility with it. If, um, you know, there was something that said we would keep the, um, you know, the seven and a half feet, um, as we mentioned that it is current, like that the house is currently, I feel like that's a, a pretty good compromise. Okay. So that would mean keeping the deck within, I mean, essentially no closer than seven and a half feet to the top property line. Is that what the objective is? Yes, I think that that, um, so that basically brings it into where the um, existing corner of the house was um, dimension wise. Right. Which I don't think, you know, ruins mm -hmm. the intent of the deck or the use of the deck, mm -hmm. as long as the homeowners are are on board with that. Mr. Chairman, it seems to me that there's no that there's no particular interest in in controlling how the applicant brings that about. Mm -hmm. uh, and if if just meeting that performance standard basically will do the trick, uh, then we may want to consider having a condition to that effect uh, if the board is interested in approving the application. Well, approving I mean, obviously, we have an issue that we started off with that isn't really the application, but I'm guessing that nobody on the part of the applicant would be uh, concerned if we uh, construed this application as, in effect, uh, an application for a special permit. I would not have a problem because I don't see any information that a special permit application would provide to us that the variance application has not provided. Fine. This is the bylaw. Let's go back up to okay. So the board, um, and so just to make sure that the board is comfortable with, um, with this approach, I'm recommending that we consider that this is a property with a pre-existing non-conformity and the request is to intensify that existing non-conformity by reducing the setback from the side yard from 7.5 feet to 6.5 feet. Um, and um, in order to review that at the, the, stat, the statutory requirement at the state level is that we are allowed to make that determination, provided that it does, is not more detrimental 
not excuse me, not substantially more detrimental um, to the neighborhood than the condition as it is today. So I think what we have discussed with the applicant, the applicant has agreed to do would be sort of a combination of two things. One would be to extend the, the house out six feet to come one foot closer to the side yard, um, while at the same time um, adjusting the deck so that the deck um, is no closer to the side yard uh, side yard line than five feet, which is the amount that the bylaw allows by right um, under section 539B. Um, and so in order to, to review this, typically the board would review the special permit requirements um, and which in this, which are here now on the screen, E through G. Um, so the use A, the use requested is listed as a special permit use in the use regulations for the applicable district or so designated elsewhere in the bylaw. So um, the use requested, it's a, on our, it's a single family residence in the single family residence district. So it is actually allowed by right um, as the use. Uh, the requested use is essential or desirable to public convenience and welfare. Um, so having a house that meets the needs of uh, the family um, is desirable for a public convenience and welfare. Uh, requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. There's no change to the number of people living in the residence, the number of cars at the site uh, or any other. So, so that is not an issue. Uh, D, the requested use will not overload any public water drainage or sewer system or any other municipal systems to such an extent, the requested use or any developed use in the immediate area or in any other area of town will be unwilling to object to hazards. Um, believe in that case, that would be true. They're not changing the substantially anything in regards to any of those. Um, the town does have a bylaw that would require if the addition is over 350 square feet. Um, if you're adding more than 350 square feet of impervious area, um, but at six by 21, um, it's, it is not of that size, I don't think. My math skills are working tonight. Mm. Um, and so that would not come into, into effect. Uh, E, uh, any special regulations for the use as may be provided in this bylaw are fulfilled. Um, the only special regulation here is that 539D that allows a deck to extend into the side yard setback, no, but no closer than five feet um, to the lot line. Uh, F, the requested use will not impair the integrity or character of the district or adjoining districts, nor be detrimental to the health or welfare. Um, so this is always sort of the big one. Um, but in this case, the proposed addition is within the care within keeping within the character of the house. It's within the scale of houses in the neighborhood. Um, it is mostly hidden from the street. Um, and as the as the next door neighbor has indicated, you know, it is uh, immediately adjacent to his property. He does not have any particular concerns about uh the encroachment by the kitchen, um, but is more concerned about the reconstruction of the deck. And that is something that the applicant has agreed um, they're willing to address. And then G, uh, requested use will not by its addition to a neighborhood cause any excess of the use that could be detrimental to the character of that neighborhood. Um, and no, the this is not something that falls under that category. Um, So with those, can, in a, with a, after reviewing those, uh, it's up to members of the board to uh, decide whether or not they feel that um, it is appropriate and that this uh, proposed addition would not be substantially more detrimental uh, to the neighborhood than the current condition. There, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, so, I mean, ultimately, all of this comes back to the question about whether the proposal is more detrimental to the neighborhood than the current situation. And it seems to me that the place where 
uh, the applicant has left it uh, creates a situation where that is clearly uh, the case and uh, with the appropriate condition, I would be uh, very much in, in in support of allowing the applicants to go forward on this. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dupont. So um, even though I think it's fairly obvious that the approach that's being suggested to look at this under 40A section six is beneficial um, for the applicant, I think we should on the record, at least ask them if they're uh, okay with us approaching this um, from that perspective, rather than from the variance, which is the way that this was originally introduced. So I, I just want them to mm -hmm. have the opportunity to say, yes, we, we're okay with you looking at it as has been described. Sure. Um, so just uh, briefly uh, for that, for the applicant. So um, this was originally advertised as, as a variance application and a variance has four criteria that need to be met. They are set by state law and they're quite stringent. Um, and the first, and so it would be a very different approach to how we would go about uh, determining compliance with the law. Um, however, the, what the board is considering is approaching this as uh, simply an extension of an existing nonconformity, which just requires a, a simple vote of the board that it is not substantially more detrimental. Um, I don't know if you received a copy from the planning department of their memoranda. They had reviewed the criteria for variance um, and provided guidance to the board that they were concerned that the property didn't meet the requirements for variance. Um, but the board is... Uh, I believe that the board is comfortable proceeding with this as a um, as a determination of not substantially greater nonconformity. So, as Mr. Dupont said, I just want we I just want to make sure I explained that to you properly, and make sure that you're comfortable with us proceeding with this approach. So, um, we aren't all that familiar with all these uh, mm -hmm. rules and regulations. And uh, I, I don't know if Jenna, if, as our representative, do, do are you able to give a, an answer to this and on our behalf or or uh, is this really up to us to say yes or no? Um, I think we, uh, I'm truthfully not 100% um, on, I guess, what um, the impact would be of, you know, making the decision in one, you know, application versus the other, like, are they, I guess what, at the end of the day, is there something that's, you know, going to, to hurt the project? You know, if we don't do it within a year, do we have to reapply? Like, are there certain things that, you know, make it difficult for us? Um, Jeremy. Mr. Hanlon. You know, I, I, I've reached the age where I don't need to be diplomatic anymore. <laughs> uh, but if you read the planning, department's memorandum, if we stick with treating this as a variance, we will deny it. And it looks to me as if if it's a require if it's a special permit, we will probably not deny it. And that's the difference. So special permit sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes, please. I think I think but just to clarify for um the applicant uh, and the architect, um, the the compliance path doesn't change the way that you would build the, the project. I mean, you'd be able to build this the same way, uh, either through a variance or through the special permit. So it's just the way we're getting there. Um, the outcome wouldn't change. Well, well the outcome would change because as <laughs> Mr. Haywood said, we may not approve it the other way, uh, but it wouldn't change the way you had to build the project or the conditions around it. I'm just trying to remember if there's where it says in here that recording. Uh, so yeah, so especially the if the special permit will lapse within three years, so you have three years to exercise the approval from the board in either case. Okay, to, uh, it, it, the the thing that gets the thing built is what we want. <laughs> so. Uh, we'll just... 
keep it simple. <laughs> All right. Um, so that was that. Are there any further questions from the board? Okay, so um, should the board vote to approve, we have three standard conditions that would be applied to um, the decision, which I will go ahead and read into the record. Uh, the first is that the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, number two, the building inspector is hereby notified he's to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time he deems that a violation is present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non criminal <laughs> complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And standard number three is that the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to the special permit grant. And then additionally, as proposed by Mr. Hanlon, um, make sure I have this correct, that the reconstructed deck is not to be located closer to the side property line than five feet. Is that correct, Mr. Hanlon? Yes, that's correct. Are there any additional conditions which members of the board would want to propose? Seeing none. <clears throat> Any further questions for the board? No. No. With that, then I would ask the board for a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I move that the application be most I move that the uh the uh, board make the required section six uh finding and approve a special permit subject to the conditions that the chairman has just read into the record. second thank you mr hanlon thank you mr dupont so the motion before the board would be to approve a uh, section six finding and special permit for 201 Cold Spring is it Street or Road? Street. Street, thank you. With the four conditions being the three standard and the, the uh, fourth by Mr. Hanlon. Are there any questions from the board on what the board is voting on? Seeing none, I will then ask for a roll call vote of the board. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Thank you. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thus, uh, so the board has approved the motion for section six finding uh, and special permit for 201 Old Spring Street with the four conditions as stated. Thank you very much. So um, if you get in contact with Mr. Valarelli, um, later this week, then he can uh, guide you through the rest of the process. Essentially, the board will uh, draft up a, a formal decision that the board will vote on um, at its earliest meeting. And then um, from there, there's a 20-day appeal period where um, uh, a butters and interested parties can appeal the decision. And then beyond that, you are free and clear. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. You're very welcome. So with that, I'm going to go back up our agenda, back to number two, which is the approval of the uh, written decision for 160 Wollaston Avenue. So this is um, a hearing of ours from December, December 6th? December 6th. December 6th. Um, and... Uh, we had a decision uh, crafted by uh, Mr. Hanlon and submitted to the board for questions and comments. Are there any further questions and comments on the written decision? 
Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the written decision for 160 Wallace and Avenue? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So moved. And a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. All those in favor of the approval. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. The chair votes aye. That decision is approved. Uh, next item is number three. Uh, members vote approval of written decision for 320 Appleton Street. This was also heard on December 6th. Uh, written decision prepared by Mr. Hanlon and distributed for questions and comments. Are there any further questions or comments from the board in regards to this decision? Nope. Seeing none, may I have a motion? Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Yes, um, I move that the approval of the decision, that the decision be approved. Thank you. Second. Uh, thank you, Mr. DuPont. Roll call of the board. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That written decision is approved. Um, then that means that item four on our agenda, which was moved forward from last night, uh, which is the approval of the minutes from the December 6th meeting. Those were prepared by Mr. Valarelli and Mr. Lee and distributed to the board for questions and comments. Uh, we had a final version come out this morning. Are there any additional questions or comments in regards to those minutes? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes from December 6th? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon? So moved. Second. Thank you. And Mr. DuPont, thank you. Vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That set of minutes is approved. So then the next thing I have uh, is just to share our upcoming schedule. Um, so we tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. There's the, the walkthrough at 1021, 1026. 1027 Mass Ave. Um, I think we're meeting, going to be meeting in front of 1025 Mass Ave. Uh, and it's just an opportunity to see the site. Um, both of our uh, representatives from both of our uh, peer review consultants will be at that meeting. So we'll be able to, uh, to meet them. Um, and the applicant will be there as well. Um, I did speak with the applicant uh, briefly today, um, went over the votes that we took last night. They're all set with everything. So, um, and the Department of Planning and Community Development was nice enough to update the website for this project already. So, all of the meeting dates and hearing dates are now available on the web on the website okay. for people to see. So, that is our upcoming. Are there any questions about our upcoming schedule? No. Nope. Fantastic. Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to point out that we're meeting on St. Valentine's Day, so I hope that we have particularly amicable cases on that day. <laughs> well, it depends particularly on whether or not anything's scheduled for that date. We might be able to get it off as it's a, if there's, if there is no, uh, no business for that evening. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I would like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I especially would like to thank Rick Valarelli, Vincent Lee, and Marissa Lau for their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's reporting the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of its proceedings, and it's our understanding the record made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Moore. Yes, before you uh, do that, I just, uh, could I make one comment, please? Sure. Uh, I just want to advise Mr. Hawley that uh, uh, he's only allowed to vote once, no matter how many interested parties are at his end. Of <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Moore. All right, so motion, motion to adjourn.
uh, by Mr. Hanlon and seconded, I believe, by Mr. DuPont. Yes. Okay, roll call vote of the board. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all so very much. Happy holidays. Happy, Happy holidays. Holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Good to see you guys tomorrow. Otherwise. Okay, guys, have a great night. You Thank too. you so much. Good Take night, care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.